Well, thank you for being here. Um, it's, uh, I've presented at symposiums. It's, I'm not nervous then, but this I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Uh, new technology, maybe that's it, uh, but whatever. But we asked initially, who's doing um, uh, any type of wireless uh, straight from the camera, you know, either via your phone, via hotspot, uh, to some place, uh, either social media or just getting images done faster. Show of hands if your camera's on. Okay. Of those people, who's happy with how it's working? A few people. Okay. All right. Very good. So the other people aren't using it. Uh, do you have a desire to get there to start using it? Is that why you're here? Just curious. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my plan for today is to walk through why we need to do this, some benefits to it. Hopefully this will help build a case because there may be a need for some additional uh, technology from your institution. Uh, that might be an increase in your data plan on your personal phone or on your office phone if you're using it. Might mean a new piece of equipment as far as a transmitter um, or you know, if you're looking at some sort of uh, IT support, like can you FTP into your local server or do you need to go with a Libris or Photo Shelter um, option? So rationale for why you're gonna do something is really important. And it's more than just, oh, this is cool and I can work faster. You need to give them data and reasons that it benefits not only you, but other people. So we're gonna kind of walk through that. All right, so I'm going to attempt to share my screen here. Uh, and we'll see how things work here. All right. So how's everybody? Is everyone seeing that just fine? Yeah, Glenn, you're good. Okay. Awesome. So obviously I work at Moraine Valley Community College. I'm not you know, big like Notre Dame, BYU, all you big shots out there doing this. Um, but uh, UPAA provided the opportunity for us to do this. So just kind of a brief history of how we got here. Uh, in 2014, we hired a new director, um, Claire Briner, who is absolutely amazing. And the athletic director came to me and said, will you chaperone the women's tennis team to Texas for their national tournament? Um, the coach was young. Uh, she had coached players that were currently on her team and they needed an old man to watch over things. Uh, everything went well. Um, we took that opportunity um, to start uh, our wireless workflow. So I covered the event uh, and sent photos back uh, via photo shelter uh, from Tyler to our SID who was able to do posts uh, and write stories about it. And it worked magnificently and it just took off from there. So I would say if you've got an opportunity, find a way to use it and get people addicted to it. Once they start doing this, unless you're at Notre Dame, uh, apparently you, uh, it, they love it. Uh, my experience has been, oh, I don't have to take pictures. I can just sit in my office or I can just sit in the bleachers. Um, they love it. So find that. So why do we do a wireless workflow? Um, first off, better quality. I always like to say we need better images. So obviously iPad, iPhone can't uh, compete with uh, our cameras. Um, and a big part of that is better access. Um, we can walk up to the front of the auditorium. We can stand right in front of everybody. We can make a better photograph uh, than most of the iPhone people. They like to stand in the back and zoom in on their iPhone and try to get that picture. It'll be blurry, it'll be grainy. And then they're like, why don't my pictures look good? Or why don't I get the engagement? Um, and this is something we can help solve for them. Um, I view it as also a better use of talent. Um, we do our job, we take pictures. Uh, writers, they can focus on writing. I'm, unless you're somebody who can write well, uh, like Susan or Jeff Miller, Jaron's a good author, um, I am not. Um, but it frees you up just to use people's uh, talents better. Social media people, they can do their hashtagging, whatever they do. I stay out of their end of the pool. Um, they're good at that. 
efficiency is also, again, this is key when you're trying to make a pitch to get that new equipment to help you do this. Um, for me, I can shoot a basketball game or graduation, the event's over, I put my camera bag down in my office and I go home. There's no sitting in my office, editing photos, sending off emails to people to post. They're already doing that in real time. It is absolutely wonderful. I can worry about processing the raw files when I get back to the office over the weekend. You know, on Monday, I'm not stuck at the office during, doing things. It has changed how we do things. Um, we've got one client on campus that wants everything immediately. It doesn't matter if it's the busiest day in March and you've got six shoots back to back, their little one off award ceremony, they want covered front to end and they want the photos now. I just create a gallery for them, shoot everything right to them and then walk away. They're happy. And if you make a client happy, it's so much better. Um, if you are sharing with your social media people, real-time posting of images. Um, it's happening. And that, that is so key. Um, if you're trying to shoot and post at the same time, you're going to miss something. Can I get a hand raise on that? If you're trying to do them both, you're just missing something. Um, if your eyes stuck to the camera, you're going to get that one shot. Maybe you'll be better than Nate at some point, maybe win a POY, uh, hopefully, uh, if you've got your eye up to the camera. Um, sharing. Uh, your audience is starting to use your content. That's critical. I mean, we're the, we're the people that are in control of how our universities and colleges look. So if we can get our stuff to them, all the better. Uh, and this reinforces your brand. Um, so critical. Um, you're not, social media people can be great um, PR folks, but they just won't have the same look that we know uh, and we're adhering to those brand standards. Okay, there's a couple ways to do it. You can shoot from your camera to your phone. And typically, I think both on Nikon, Canon, and probably Fuji and Sony, it's referred to as HTTP, which is where uh, the device is creating a small website. Um, it'll be an IP address that you'll have to copy into your browser uh, that you can actually view the images on the camera. Uh, typically, it's shorter distance, so you need to be with probably within 10, 15 feet. Um, works well in a studio, but not very good for other things. Same thing with a tablet. Um, if you're shooting to your laptop, you can do the same thing. Um, but where we're gonna focus primarily this time is shooting from your camera uh, to a website of some sort or back to a server, which is the FTP mode. Everybody know what FTP is? You don't have to know the acronym, but you've heard of it before. Transfer File transfer protocol. Is that right, Jaron? Yes. Okay, I got something right, okay. So for the Nikon, um, the D5, even the D4 uh, and D6 uh, connect to the transmitter. And in this case, it's the newest one is the WT5A. Uh, it connects right to the side of the camera. You can see it right here. Um, and then it connects to the internet, or should, well, not to the internet, it connects to a, uh, a hotspot or your campus network. Um, and you can carry this in your pocket. Is everyone familiar with little portable hotspots? I mean, this goes way back to Mark Philbrick showing us how to do this at that first gymnastic shoot, I think was the first time everyone started seeing this. And in this case, we're going to an FTP enabled website. Um, so for, I like Photo Shelter, uh, Libris, it is so simple that you can set this up and just get images there right away. Send a link directly uh, to the person who needs it, and then they can get the images they need. Um, how are we doing on questions, Jaron? Anything yet, or any deal? Uh, not, not yet. We're okay. And just to get a, a good time to remind everybody, if you have questions, throw them into the chat box, and we'll we'll do our best to to address them. I know that we're going to be need to talk about troubleshooting. We'll get to that a little bit later in the presentation. Please, please make it work. There is voodoo involved in wireless. Some days it's great. Other days, not so great. So if you don't have the, a D4 to a D6 uh, camera, Nikon does make uh, a WT7 transmitter, which looks like a motor drive. Uh, for those of you born uh, before 1985, um, 
and it connects to the Z6, Z7, 780, you can see there on the slide, um, and works well. The downside is it has a USB cable that connects it. Um, I'm still trying to get our mechanical engineering folks to design something that would fit here securely, uh, which would be great. If you had a nice little USB cable with some right angles, fit right on there, oh, it'd be awesome. But again, it goes through the transmitter uh, to your campus network um, and then back to uh, the FTP enabled uh, website. Okay. So if you're gonna work on your campus Wi-Fi, does everybody do that? Show of hands, okay. Campus Wi-Fi's are great, they're fast. Uh, things move very quickly, but you're gonna have to work with IT. Um, do whatever you have to. Um, it is critical because if you connect and start sending big files, they're gonna notice the traffic. Um, so whatever, you know, they don't care about the YouTube and the Netflix flying, but something about photos, they, they tend to notice. Um, ask for access to your test network. And then they're gonna look at you with that puzzled look like, oh, well, how do you know about that? Every IT department has a test network. Every time they add a new uh, access point, every time they do something different, they're gonna test it out. Um, our IT department was very willing to share that with us. Um, they said, go for it. Um, we started using that. You can tell them, I'm not gonna clog down the main network sharing big photos. Now, you won't ever send a raw file. Don't ever do that. But you can threaten that you might have to send a raw file. That could be, I don't know what, 75, 80 megabytes or gigabytes, whatever. I don't know. Anyway, don't be afraid to threaten. Uh, the other solution is ask for a PPSK, which is a private pre-share key. Uh, the benefit to this is you can use the campus network and you don't have to confirm that you will obey all the rules by clicking the OK button or checking a box. Cameras don't allow you to do that. They don't have a web browser built in uh, to the camera. So by using the private pre-share key, you log on once and you should be good for years. And typically it's up to three or four different uh, devices can connect. So you can use that on your phone, you can use it on your camera, um, and just a lot easier. Um, you can ask them to filter by the MAC address of the device. Um, you can find that very easily on the camera. Uh, if, they're on, if they're not willing to do the PPSK, um, you send them the MAC address and they may be a lot more uh, receptive to that. Um, if you're gonna get a hotspot, which is critical if you're off campus. So if your campus is covered well, you won't need one, but if it's that tennis court that doesn't have really good internet access, you'll need some sort of uh, mobile access. Um, I would say choose the least popular carrier. So if Verizon's the big carrier in your area, look at AT&T or Sprint. If it's AT&T, look at Verizon. The idea there is the fewer people that are accessing the cellular signal, the better for you. Occasionally things will slow down, uh, in the busy uh, times. I think, Matt, you've experienced that, and I'm pretty sure Jaron has uh, as well, uh, different places, uh, talking with them. Get an unlimited plan. First time you shoot graduation or a basketball game or a football game, and you're sending tons of images, you're gonna eat up that data plan in a big hurry. Um, and nothing will get IT, the, actually, they switched mine, I think I had five gig, uh, I think it was five gig initially. And I blew past it like in the first month, like 10 or 15 gig. And they're like, oh, we need to change this. And it was like a miracle happened. Next, the next month I had an unlimited plan that was cheaper. So talk to your folks. Uh, they probably have some sort of corporate arrangement. Um, also understand there's going to be interference at large events. Uh, who's tried to make a phone call at a pro football game or surf the internet? Anybody? not happening. It's just, I mean, it's so hard to get a signal. Same thing's gonna happen if you've got, if you're at a big event um, with that mobile device. Um, and interestingly, I shot a Bulls game a few years ago and in the media room were large signs, no mobile hotspots in the stadium, which was kind of interesting. 
I'm not sure what their thinking on that was, but did not allow it. Now I went ahead and did it anyway. I didn't much care. Figure how are they going to find me? I'll search my bag. I don't know. Anyway, it still worked. Okay. Uh, so, what kind of files do you send? Um, Percy, I shoot raw and JPEG, and I send the JPEGs. Uh, nobody needs a raw file, especially people posting uh, to Instagram. And then I only choose to transmit the JPEGs. Okay. When I get back to the office, I can edit the raws and those go in the permanent uh, archive. Uh, medium or small? Yeah. Can I ask real quick? Sure. About how big, how like file size are those JPEGs? Do you do you know what it would be? I think they're twenty five hundred pixels on the long side. Uh huh. So it's I'm probably sure. just over a megabyte then. Yeah, and I think I I may even choose a small, uh, a fairly aggressive medium compression, not fine. A Nikon, it's fine, medium, and small. I think. I can't remember the exact terms, but. I figure for me, it's the faster they send is better. Um, people want stuff uh, quickly. Once they start getting it, even if they, they were used to waiting, you know, six hours until you process something, if you can get it to them in 10 seconds, the next event, they're going to want it in five. It's, it's a beast. But so medium or small uh, yeah. tends to work fine. Um, depends on who's getting the image. So I've got one person I know if I don't send a medium file, they're going to, they, they crop things oddly. So I've got to give them more, more pixels to work with. Um, so I, a lot of times I'll choose a larger size to send to them. Uh, but my main, the main guy I work with small is adequate. He understands. Um, so do you transmit all your files or just the selects? Uh, I think Jaron, you just choose what you send. Is that right? Yep. Okay, does anybody, even show of hands or not or something, send everything? No, okay. All right, man. Not only do I use bridge, but I send everything. Man, I am breaking the laws of here. I just, I, I truly don't care. Um, I just send it all. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I've been burned once or twice, um, but almost never a problem. Uh, just send it all. And then it's nice to be able to look at your, the back of your camera and see that they're all the files are gone and you know, everything went. So that's, that's me. Okay. Now the a more interesting part, where to send it. Um, again, we're going to talk about FTP upload to uh, a website. Uh, this eliminates distance. Um, so somebody can still be at home. Your, your, uh, whoever's doing your social media, whoever's, working anywhere, especially now, you could be shooting somewhere and sending to a website and they could be grabbing those when they're at home, not on campus. Um, it eliminates distance and the other ways you have to be close by. I've had great luck with Libris, Photo Shelter, uh, and Extensus Portfolio. Um, if you have, um, i trying to remember the name of it, Mark would know. It's the online sharing for portfolio. You can send directly to, uh, to that. I think Robbie Net Rogers published. down at Baylor did that. What's the name of that, Mark? Do you remember? Net Publish. Net, Net Publish, yeah. yeah. Uh, that works. Um, for ease, I am so simple with Libris and Photo Shelter. Um, the key there is, and again, if there's network people that understand this, you can explain it to me. FTP opens up a port on a switch that allows for traffic coming in and, and security people freak out at that. They're very hesitant to allow anything in that they can't control. So when you go to them and say, hey, I'd like to be able to FTP into my server, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. And he says, well, we got to do this. And they're like, well, and you go, but we could if we had this product. And they're like, oh, tell us about that product. Oh you know, Libris, and they're like, oh, and then you tell them, and they're like, oh, 5,000? That's no big deal. You know, we spend that monthly on our, our Microsoft Office license. You know, there's options there. When people, when you, it's amazing how much money IT has for things. You know, you're like, I want to do this, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's not a problem. You're like, oh, but I really meant I want to do this much. 
So don't be afraid to leverage IT to help you uh, in a lot of things. If they can keep their network secure and their, their assets secure, they may just you know, fork up the money for you. All right. The nice thing, again, we talk about it's accessible anywhere. So when I was in Texas, you know, people back home are searching for things. Uh, it was absolutely wonderful. All right. All right. So now we're going to talk about how to set up Libris and Photo Shelter. Um, we'll have to create an FTP user. This is critical because you'll see it when we go to set up the camera. Keep the name and the password simple. Don't, you really don't need crazy IT 16 character capital letters and symbols stuff. Um, galleries. So now, Jaron, you send all to one gallery, right? That's yeah. your workflow. And then you clear it out after a period of time. Yeah, we just have one kind of one landing spot for every single sport, every single event. And yeah, we just manage okay. it. And it's just to, for simplicity. We, we, do, we have been talking about maybe having one for football and one for basketball, something we're looking yeah. at. But right now, we just have, we call it the, the live gallery. Okay. I, for almost each event, I create a separate gallery for that event. I can name it what it is. I copy and paste uh, the address and name, password, protect it, and send it off to the client. Now they have their stuff. Works, works absolutely wonderfully. So Jaron does one, uh, and I do a gallery for each assignment. Again, that's personal preference. Uh, the downside to a gallery for each assignment, if I look back at my list of galleries, I have got a lot of galleries that go back to 2014. I probably should be taking time during this quarantine and start to, del to delete those and just clear off that uh, site because it's getting out of control. All right, so we're going to go back. Now we're going to attempt to make the big switch here. Uh, Glenn, uh, do you have a minute for questions? Sure, please. Okay, here's a few. Uh, first of all, um, you, I know that when we're doing this kind of stuff, the splash, uh, the splash login is what kills a lot of the cameras. Can Nikon... Uh, you, you mentioned that it's a pre-shared key. Yes. So that's, that's will allow you to get past the splash login. Correct. So for yes. most cameras, uh, basically if there's a, if, if there's, you have to put your name and, or email and password and hit okay, your cameras really have a hard time doing that. I think the key and, and Glenn mentioned this, there is always a way. And a lot of times it has, takes talking to IT, but there is always a way to get on the network. There's always a way around all of their restrictions. It's just a matter of if they want to get you that way or not. A box of donuts will work magic for those obstacles. Yep. Uh, um, go ahead. Live by three dozen donuts. Go spend 30 bucks, drop them off at the IT and say, thanks. And then magic happens. It's, oh, it's wonderful. Grease the wheels with, with, with powder coated donuts. <laughs> uh, on your Nikon file size, I'm sorry, we talked a little bit about file size. What picture profile are you using or do you set up your camera to make sure that those JPEGs are perfect? They're close. Um, sRGB for the color space, um, because I know they're primarily going to web. Uh, I'm going to, boy, this, this is my third strike. I'm going to probably never be allowed back here again. Um, I use auto ISO uh, in manual mode. So I, like, I know what shutter speed I want, and I know what aperture I want. And I let the camera go from there. I set a limit, you know, it could be, you know, 3,200 at the upper end or 2,650, whatever happens to work for that. Um, especially when I'm doing, this is really when I'm doing event work. So the, the files are really good. I mean, these cameras are, are unbelievable. I, if you told me 20 years ago, I could be shooting at 3,200 for a publication cover, it would have never, it's amazing. So the files are pretty close. Um, they're not perfect, but they're social media um, and they're for parents, athletes' parents um, to have. They're good enough, uh, which bugs me a little, but they look really good. Okay. Uh, and then you mentioned that you send everything, which, you know, I don't. You're crazy. But I support your decision. Uh, do you, the people that are pulling photos, do they get overwhelmed by choices or are they, are they people that are generally graphic designers and used to choosing? Um, so we have the social media guy in our office, uh, Mike, sometimes gets a little 
like shit too much. Um, but he's kind of gotten over that. Uh, and he can scroll through the phone pretty easily um, and find what he needs. Uh, if they're graphic designers, they love more choices uh, until they don't. Um, it just depends when they're, what mood some people are in. Um, so I've not, I've not heard too much. No, I'd... And then after that, do you go ahead and do you go and cull the gallery of, of your, the photos you don't want out afterwards? Depends. A lot of times I do. Um, if it's a bigger event, um, after I do the raw edit, um, I'll batch convert the abridge uh, to uh, JPEGs, and then I'll delete everything in that gallery and okay. upload the JPEGs uh, with the proper file name and um, all the metadata. Uh, one thing I, I do try to do, and I, I just got my D5 back a couple weeks ago or months ago, um, I think I had copyright information and contact information. The camera inserts that. Uh, so when it does go to a website, at least we've got our name on it. Um, not that we'd ever sue anybody for misusing our photo, but it's good to have your information there. So if you're doing that, uh, or if you haven't, definitely add your contact and uh, copyright info in camera. Oh, and then just one, one more question on your file. Uh, do, you, do you have any preferences for contrast or color saturation or anything like that? Uh, not too much. Um, I'd have to go back through and look at it. Um, my memory's bad. I go through and set it up and I may tweak things every so often. Um, but yeah, maybe a little more contrast, maybe a little sharpening uh, on the JPEG side. Um, again, it goes back to these cameras are so good. Um, man, I, I, I'm amazed. It's just, thank you, Nikon. Thank you, Canon. You guys are, man, just amazing. Last question. Uh, when, when you're doing FTP, wireless FTP from events, is how many photos are you sending? How many events do you choose to do? What, what makes the determination whether to do it or not? First is, um, does it have a news or a social uh, component to it? So if we're going to post um, something from it, I choose to do that. And I, a lot of times I just walk back to the social media manager's desk and say, hey, I'm going to go cover the bake sale. Do you need images? And he may go, yeah, I think we need them this time or no, we had enough last time. Um, if it's anything with the president, definitely. Um, so news, higher value projects get a gallery. Um, big events, graduation was our biggest. I think I shot a little over a thousand images, um, you know, in a couple hours. So that went, pretty easily. If I cover like the tennis tournaments I go to out of state, um, a couple thousand maybe, because that could be a three to four day uh, trip. Uh, so it just depends. Um, uh, on an average week, uh, non-COVID average, but on an average week, yeah. how, how many events would you say you do FTP a week? In the spring, so busy season in the spring, we're probably shooting on a, on a monthly basis, our highest month is right around 100. Our low is right, right around 40 something. So somewhere in there on a monthly basis and maybe two thirds of those get galleries. Wow, that's a lot, awesome. Yeah, um, right. and really it comes down to, we're at a point where I'm working too much. Um, so if I can shoot it and get it out and satisfy a client, then I can catch up in the processing. So if I can just push it out to them, make them happy, um, so I'm not going back to the office and just processing, which is, we all know that stress, right? Yeah. You know, it's like download and then rush out to the next thing. Well, and I would definitely say that the iPhone has ruined everybody's expectations, right? They know that it can happen quickly. Yeah. And the great thing about FTP, and this is one of the main reasons I'm a big proponent is, is like you said, at the end of the day, I'm done. Because yeah. the interest is gone. People have moved on. They've got Netflix to take care of. The the, the FTP will save you time. And yeah, yeah. The, I think that some people, there's an obstacle to buying the technology for it. Although most of the new cameras are gonna have it built in completely into the camera. I think there, there's a technological, there's a hurdle just trying to set it up. But once you have it going, man, it, it just, it makes your life better. Yep, it, it certainly does. Yeah, and saving time is huge. It, it can't say enough. Well, I think we'll be ready to move on. And again, okay. if you guys have questions, throw them in the, in the chat box and we'll, we'll come to them in a bit.
All right, so uh, we got to share. You guys are seeing my screen or not? Yeah, you're still sharing. Okay, so this is uh, this is UPAA's Libris uh, account, um, and uh, so we've got our. You create a folder structure. Everybody's aware of that. Here's a gallery that we're going to send images to. Um, so you create that ahead of time. Know where you're sending it. However, you do your naming, whatever, uh, your folder structure. Um, but you go up to the media tab and you choose, um, I see that far, upload methods. And this is your incoming FTP. Now, variety of things, don't pay attention to those. Here's the new one I created uh, for the Nikon wireless uh, demonstration. It shows the gallery where it's going. Uh, you can turn it on or off, enable it. Um, and the username uh, is again, keep it simple. You know, four characters, whatever. You need, you need to understand what it means, but keep it simple. So we're gonna we're gonna go in and edit this, which is would be just like creating it. Um, so it automatically fills out who you are uh, here. You can decide where you're gonna send it. So you can start typing the name of your gallery, and it will auto populate what's available. Um, I tend to go year first, that way I can find things and sort things. So we're going to go to the 2020 Nikon wireless workflow gallery. I guess you could add notes. I, I don't know. Um, doesn't matter. Here's the username. Make it nice and simple. Thank you, Matt. We are the priests. <laughs> 2112. Um, anyway, add Keep it simple. And really for this, the one and the two are next to each other. It makes it so fast when you're logging in. Click save. Um, you can send this. So if you're working with freelancers uh, that have FTP enabled cameras, you can send this information to them. It's good to know this also. The server address, ftp.photoshelter.com. Okay, you're gonna need to know that. Port 21, most cameras default to port 21. It's like the super secret FTP port. I don't know. I guess I could try to care, but it works. It doesn't work. And passive mode, okay? You can copy that information if your memory shot or you can just hang on to it, all right? Typically cancel out that. So now that's all set up. So everything you shoot on your camera, once you set it up, will go to this gallery, okay? Now, when I go, I'm gonna go in and go to a new event. Say I wanna try something new. I'll click edit and I'll change where the gallery is going. Click next and then it's all good. All right, let's head back. So we're gonna go back to our library. Here's my gallery where all the images are going. On a Mac, if you control click, you can copy the link address, all right? Go to your email, type in whatever you want to as an address, create a hyperlink, paste it in there. Um, and then, guys, I can get out of the way here. Um, here's your settings. So permission type, you can set it up as a password. We made the password UPAA, okay? You can, and Libris, you can decide who gets to download what. It can, if it's an image download type, you can say it, the original file, you can change the sizes if you like. Um, so you could send a huge file and let them uh, only choose a certain size. Um, note your password, include that. I include that in the email. I type, here's the site, here's the password, save. And then I say, as soon as I start shooting, you'll have images. Um, so Glenn, do you send that out before the event then? Depends. Uh, a lot of times, yes. Um, just so they've got it. Now, for, for a social media guy, definitely. I'll, I can even make them up, you know, a couple days in advance uh, and then switch them uh, before I head out. Sure. Um, but yeah, share it uh, as soon as you can. Uh, quick story that worked really well. Um, good Lord, we're running out of time. Um, had to shoot an art project uh, for something. And I was able to shoot directly from the camera in the studio and get them like 30 art pieces done in like an hour and a half. Uh, and the project was completed. 
And for me, that's huge. If I can turn things around quickly, typically it's because somebody didn't tell me about something until they needed it yesterday. All right. So question, anybody have questions about setting that up? I think we're, I don't see any. Okay, we'll, good. We can come back to it though. All right, let's get through this more quickly here. Okay, so to set up your Nikon camera, uh, go through your menu structure and choose um, network. Uh, if you already have something set up, this is what you'll see. You can either connect or change settings. Um, you go in. Uh, Glenn, yep. I think, uh, can you say that again? I think we lost you for a second. Oh, okay. So activate the menu item on, on the Nikon, uh, get an unstable network connection. There might be another Zoom meeting happening or the kids playing video games. All right, is that better? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna create a profile. All right. Uh, use the connection wizard. They built these tools in, they work great. Um, choose the type, how you, what you're going to do. And then in this case, it'll be FTP upload. And this is all done with this wheel as you move through. Uh, the D5 has touchscreen, which I think like the 5D4, a bunch of other cameras, Jaren and Canon site are all touchscreen yeah. as well. I haven't converted yet. Um, it's my big fat fingers get in the way. I like the wheel. Uh, it confirms it before I hit the wrong thing. Uh, one thing I will say, be sure and don't type the wrong thing. It's harder to delete things than you would imagine. Um, I've started over many times. So name your profile. In this case, and this is for you, um, uh, UPAA, okay? Then you're gonna search for a network. So make sure your network's on. So in this case, um, make sure your MiFi is on. And in this case, you'll see that it found a bunch of networks, uh, which you're, uh, you will find. Anything that's broadcasting a signal, you'll find monitors, computers. A lot of people have things set up oddly. Uh, so we're going to choose the Verizon network. It's going to ask for your password. Okay, there's the password for my Verizon network. So I'll give you guys a chance to copy that down. Next symposium we're at, you can jump on my network. Um, Next, we're going to let the IP address, again, we don't need to know this stuff. You just automatically choose it, okay? It'll take a few seconds. Now you can see whatever that means. Again, I don't know, I don't care. It just works, okay? Uh, then you're gonna choose the server type. SFTP is a secure FTP. Libris and PhotoShelter don't suggest that. They just go straight FTP. I'm not sure, again, why. I just know straight FTP works the best. Okay, this is where you need to remember that uh, server address and you type in ftp.photoshelter.com. Uh, it's not case sensitive, um, but that's up to you. Uh, this, is, this is where you will test your patience because you will hit the wrong character at some point and have to figure out how to delete it and go back. Okay, then you're going to choose um, the ID. So you're going to enter that ID that we entered in Libris and Photo Shelter. Okay, so you enter, or actually the password. So here it is, 2112. Um, again, they're right next to each other. Very simple and easy. Um, and now we're, where are we going to send this? Um, in this case, uh, to the home folder. So essentially we're telling it, we're gonna let the, the website decide where it goes. Okay, success. Not too hard, right? Simple. Has anybody struggled with this who's worked with Nikon and done it? Anybody? It's okay, safe place. What happens here? Okay. All right, so once you get to this screen, which is after you click okay, it's hard to see here. You'll have three green or three blue bars. So your, your signal strength will be right here, which is when you see that, everything's good. This is the remaining images that are to uh, transmit. So at times you may look and you may have 60 images waiting to go. 
if the network's bogged down, if you're really hammering it a lot, um, you may see that, but it'll catch up. Uh, at campus network, they fly. They're there maybe a second. Take a photo, even on a burst at a basketball game, you may end up with 10 or 15 and then they're just gone. Um, they work really well. Occasionally, like everything that's in a computer, you may have to shut it down and restart it. Uh, have you experienced that, Jaron? Yeah. Uh, uh, it just, sometimes the gremlins come out and the best thing to do is shut everything down, turn it back on. Yeah. Have you ever thought about dropping the camera to kick it into action? Sometimes. So that's the best way to get a new camera. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah, no, it, it, it can get frustrating at times, but it's okay. All right. Okay, so let's go back to, I'm gonna do a quick demo here. So I am going to, in the chat, I have to stop sharing my screen, don't I? To enter yeah. the chat. Yep. Okay. And guys, while he's doing this, again, ask any questions you have. Um, we'll answer the ones we can answer and make up answers to the ones we can't. Okay, I apologize. This should, is that link active or no? Uh, no, but people it? could copy and paste it, I'm sure. Yeah, if you wanna copy and paste that link into a web browser on your computer, um, I'm gonna shoot a few photos and we'll just see this thing, you'll get to see my messy room, but. The gallery password is UPAA? Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's up. If you want to look, I mean, you can see it's connecting to the network. I mean, kind of normal stuff. Still connecting. Yeah, the MiFi is active. Occasionally, it, the first time you connect like this, if you're, especially if the MiFi isn't, Sometimes you got to wake it up and again, make it work. Of course, now it's going to be, whenever you do something, it'll give it a time. It'll get, take a second, but there it goes. Okay. So there we have a good signal. Um, everything's working. All right. Self portrait guys. Here we go. This is easy. I like this work. So I mean, just three quick ones. And if you want to see that, you can see it transmitting. I don't know. Can you guys see that or no? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you're, you're, it keeps on trying to take can it. Can you see it? So there you go. Yeah. Both Glenn okay. and his camera are ghosts. Yeah. Okay. So again, I've, I think I've got pretty poor signal strength on that. Well, two of the images here. have already shown up. Yeah. So less than seven seconds, uh, things are there. Um, that's how it works. It's, you know, and if you have multiple cameras, you can copy the profile, all the settings in to your XD card or SD card, load them in a new camera and just copy them. And it's all done, uh, which would be really handy if you got more than uh, one shooter. Um, really works well. Um, we have a really good shooter that covers graduation with me and I hire her every year. Um, she doesn't have an FTP enabled camera and she's a little nervous shooting and letting people see before she has a chance to edit and finally did that and let her do it. And she's like, this is great. I'm done. I just go home. You know, there's no more, you know, working for four or five hours, editing photos and sending them to you. They're all done. And I'm like, perfect. Now we're not missing certain images that she shoots. Okay. Other questions? All right. Um, oh. you, you mentioned a few, but what are other FTP options if people don't have photo shelter, labor risk, cumulus? What are other sites that they can use for FTP? I think what's the, there's ways, they're not as simple. I think Smug Mug, there's a way in. It's a little trickier and involves some other apps on your phone. Um, you can, we, we did this early on, uh, BYU had a tutorial on this. You can set up your office computer to receive FTP mm -hmm. images. Um, and then you can have an automated action to either 
upload those someplace else to a server if it's a security issue. You can write one that actually email folks uh, directly. Uh, we did that for a while. Uh, it was fun being a programmer, but it was just iffy if it would actually work. Yeah, um, if any of you out there have sites that you use uh, to send FTP to, um, share them in the chat. I, I mean, there's basically any site that you can set at FTP, you can do this with pretty much. Um, I think you can do it on Box. Um, like say, if you have a server, you can just set up your own FTP or your university, your IT guy should be able to set one up for you. It's not hard. There are even FTP sites you can just go online and pay for an FTP site that's a remote site. Uh, pay like five bucks a month for it or whatever. Uh, it, it, it's doable. FTP is pretty easy to set up and, and you know, just need to find something that's going to work for you. Um, now, Glenn, you use a hotspot. Do you ever use your own phone hotspot versus the external hotspot? Uh, no. Um, we don't have the data for it. Um, I have two, still have two kids on my plan. Uh, they, hog my, they hog the data. Um, so we go over in a heartbeat. Okay. So um, for us, the university pays for our phones. And I think me and Nate pretty much blow through every data cap that they have. So, and they don't bother us. So um, what I do when I travel is I take my iPhone, which is AT&T, and I take my Verizon hotspot with me. And what I've found is generally one or the other is going to work in almost any location I go to. Um, I went out to visit Tennessee earlier uh, in, the, in the fall and I was able to send photos from the field. It took about eight seconds or nine seconds to send a photo. And I think I was using my, just my iPhone hotspot. Um, I, when I get to a location, I try them both out and see which one works better. And then, of course, when all the fans get there, I do it again because, you know, it, it changes <laughs> things. One of the advantages of FTP is it can take two minutes to send a photo and it's okay. That's one of the great things about FTP versus like sending an email out. Uh, FTP is pretty powerful. Sometimes you have to be patient with it, um, but it, it really is a pretty solid way to do this. Um, so one other thing, Jaron, you can create in the Nikon, I'm not sure how many you can create, but you can have different profiles. So I have a profile for the MiFi, I have a profile for uh, the uh, campus network. I still have the, the Bulls um profile set up in my camera you can just keep adding them in there um yeah. it's great so if one doesn't work you just quick choose a new one and you're ready to go within you know seconds uh it's really handy yeah and, and me and glenn have both been doing this for a long time and, and i think that's one of the biggest changes we've noticed is the fact that now there are many stadium networks that can handle you um and I, we have a entire our entire football stadium with sixty four thousand fans they can all get on their phones and I can still send photos through the stadium network. Our basketball arena has 21,000 and the same thing. Uh, because as most athletic departments have found, connectivity is very important to the fan base. Um, and I've been surprised as I, I've been traveling football for several years. This last year, it's been a lot easier to find uh, networks. It really has. And it's, and it's just gonna get better and better because people, the fans demand connectivity. So that's, that's just something for you, for you to look at. Um, many stadiums do have a social media network. It's a special wireless network just for social media people. To find the, bribe the right person to get on that network. That's going to help you a lot. In the old days, we used to set up our own network. We'd bring a router and plug into an Ethernet port and send it up routers on the field. That was just a private network for BYU Photo. We don't even do that anymore. Um, our wireless network in the stadium has, has proven to be reliable, and we've been very happy with that. Uh, Glenn, uh, some very, a very good comment. The question is, is, is your bank pin card number 2112? <laughs> and if it not, might be. It if might not, Jason be. wants to know what it is just, just for future reference. Wants, you know. Funny, um, my, my son the other day said, if you go to a Rush concert and happen to find a wallet, you're, you're, you're in because every guy there, uh, the pin's 2112. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, on the, on the Nikon, you said that there's a sleep and wake. Do you know, can you change this when it goes to sleep on the wireless or not? Ooh, that I don't know. It'd be hand, there, there is a power versus network. There is a setting and I just look, it's under options in the main menu and it's network speed or power saving. And you can switch between those two options. Okay. Um, nothing is that critical that I would, you know, networks, you know, I would give it the few seconds uh, to yeah. catch back up. That's just me. 
So on the Canon side, on the, especially on the 1DX Mark III, which just came out, uh, there is a way to turn it so it never goes to sleep. That will use more battery, but for us, for what we're doing, that we, we leave that on. Um, and I think that there is a way to set the sleep. I can't remember. I'll have to go look. But yeah, and, yeah, and that's and the battery. And Chris, Chris from Nikon just mentioned that you can change the timers as well, that the it will prevent the camera from going to sleep, which will also help in yeah. the transmitting, especially when you're transmitting where you are every photo. Um, yeah. It's a little less critical for us where we're only, we're only, tra uh, you, you don't have to do that. You can also just transfer your selects and then, you know, the camera will, the, will wake up. But I found on the Canon side that when we leave the wireless on, it's just quicker. It's just, it, it just saves us time. And for us, it's very time critical to get that stuff out. Um, one, Be aware okay. that the, the battery, this will kill your battery. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So it, it's not as bad as the D1 days, but don't cover an event without two or three backup batteries. It just, absolutely. Yep. The big question. You ready for this one? Sure. Troubleshooting. What, what, what are the problems you run into and how do you solve them? And I've got a few too. Hmm. It, Sometimes just con connectivity. Sometimes it connects, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, just turn it off and back on. Um, putting putting the information in uh, early on. Oh my gosh, I was about ready to pull what hair I had out um, because if you mistype something, you got to go back. Um, have everything ready when you're putting it in to the camera. Because if you've got to stop, go back and look and check something and you're gone for five minutes, it'll kick you out and you just can't go back in and edit. You have to start over again. Um, that was an issue. When we were in um, at Beth uh, Lowry's symposium, we were setting up for the portrait event and the old Canon add-on transmitter, you had to have the IP address of the FTP server. Oh my gosh, that about blew our minds. How do you know that? You know, 10 dot, whatever, dot, whatever, dot, whatever. Um, so little things like that. Have all your information ready when you put it in. Yeah, I would, I would even add to that um, that we actually have a Google Doc where all of our passwords and names and everything are just in case like the camera has to get reset up. If you're in the road, it's real easy to do. We also put stickers on our hotspots with the name and password up for the network. Just again, same thing. Um, I'd say connectivity is definitely the issue. The, what I do when I get to a situation like I'm in a football stadium on the road and it's not working, I shut down the camera and I shut down the hotspot, whether it's my phone or it's my wireless hotspot. I will usually power the hotspot on first, then yep. turn the camera back on, and then I'll reconnect. And in Canon, I actually will go through and do a reconnection to that network. Like I'm setting it up by just hitting yes to everything that's already been programmed. And that seems to help a lot. Another thing is, is you need to pay attention to how far away the hotspot is from your camera. Sometimes too close is bad. Sometimes too far is bad. If your hotspot's in a pocket or, you know, not necessarily good, I'll usually set my hotspot on the little, you know, think tank bag I have with me and that, and that will help, uh, you know, we've something we've, me and Nate have noticed a quirk on the 1DX Mark III. If the hotspot's too close to the camera, it has a hard time connecting to it. It needs to be at least a foot or two away, which is just weird, but that's, that's just one of those things you have to learn about. Um, also pay attention. So there was an issue we had with the new WT5 used, I think it's the, the network protocol is B and C, if I can read it here. Yeah, network B. Right now it's got a, or AC, A, C, N, A, G, and B. The new one came out with an AC net, um, wireless protocol, um, but my MiFi did not support AC, so the two wouldn't connect. So uh, now, you know, routers are newer now. And I think Mark Caraview had the same issue with some of his routers on his campus. They went and used the AC connect. So pay attention to network stuff. Um, and this is where those donuts to IT help. So that can also be an issue. Do you ever, do you ever use a remote camera and it's connected to, to send photos automatically? Yes, that's very helpful. So it's just transmit, it's just like this camera set up with a, pocket wizard and a, uh, a trigger on it. Volleyball above the net and I'm just clicking away and it's sending them. What's nice is I just pull my phone out, look at photo shelter and go, oh yeah, okay, that's working. Uh, now if I were smart, I would 
do the HTTP mode, which I can actually control the camera from an iPad. Uh, change aperture, change exposure, color balance, all the camera controls, but flash and yeah, it's all pretty safe. Plus you should have raw file, you can change anything later. Is, uh, are you able to put your, the people are really interested in your step-by-steps. Could you maybe share that as a PDF or yes. something so people can use that to set up their own cameras? Definitely. Um, what, what was the biggest obstacle when you were starting this? What was the biggest obstacle in getting this going? Hmm. Think back that far. Um, well, initially it was the MiFi. I always had to borrow a MiFi from IT. Um, and if you just make yourself a pain after the fifth time of asking, you know, in five days, they'll just give you one. Uh, they're tired of seeing you. Um, the other was uh, connecting, you know, just early on the WT5. Is that, am I saying the right one, Chris? I don't know. No, WT6 is the newest one. WT5 um, was the older one. It wasn't, it didn't have as great a range. So sometimes you just lost range. Uh, but like everything, technology gets better. That was the hardest part. Um, it was like crack cocaine to people. They loved getting their images right away. They're addicted. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you, it's a lot easier. Everything is easier now. Back in the old dark days, like 2013, trying to do this was really hard. Now it, a lot more people are doing it. There's a lot more support. The camera companies are, are getting a lot better about making it easier. Although Canon, we need to chat. Um, but again, that information is also out there. We're, uh, we're also gonna have uh, PDFs kind of for helping you set up different cameras, something Nate and I have been working on. We'll have something on our blog post in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, if there, are there any other questions the group has? I would say, who remembers shooting slide film? E6? Could you go back and change the E6 file or go back and manipulate it? No. So this is like shooting slide film. Get it right in the camera. Um, and you don't even have to know. You just look at the back. And when it gets good, you know the exposure, fire away. Um, it takes you back to slide film. And I, I know that some people have a problem with that, that they're sending photos out that are not cropped, they're not touched. What would you say to those people? You got to trust somebody, you know? Uh, get it right in camera as best you can. Um, we're late. I mean, it's all be honest. We're lazy. I mean, I, I've said it probably three times already today. It's raw. I'll change it later. What do I care what the white balance is? It'll, it'll be fine. When I get back to the office, I can tweak it ever so slightly to make it perfect. But if you start looking for the light, if you start paying attention to the backgrounds when you're creating things, you're going to end up with a better photo uh, and less editing, which is always better. Yeah, and then uh, Robert mentioned that you also take advantage and train your team members so that you guys are on the same page. And I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is just communication. A lot of it is helping to understand, uh, you know, what it is you need. I shoot, shoot writing cameras and uh, you're going to be better in the long run, but it, it will make a difference um, in what you're doing. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? It looks like we're wrapping up a little bit. Uh, what Steve said, or what your SID would would prefer to send unaltered images. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes they need to crop a certain way. I would, I would just add maybe that point. It is really a good idea to talk to those social media people beforehand and say, is there a specific thing you're looking for? And honestly, they'll tell us, Oh yeah, we actually have a special thing happening. Can you give us a vertical of the ball like this? And that, that goes a long way to, to deal with what Matt Kishore was talking about before is, you know, if we can, if we can deliver it to them, in the, in the speed that they want it, and it's a very specific uh, request, they're gonna use it yeah. more and more. So we shoot, I shoot a lot for Instagram stories, which are all verticals, which we got beat in our heads that you can't shoot verticals. Everything has to be horizontal for the web. And now they're saying, oh, Instagram stories have to be vertical. So knowing that going in, how are you gonna use this photo? Oh, it's all for stories. Then I make sure I shoot verticals. So Jaron's right. You got to communicate with what they need. Uh, give them what they want. I'd say the other thing is, is let's say you have an athlete that's going to hit a milestone that game. I'll tell you, I can tell you how often I get the text in mid game. Oh, did you get a shot of so-and-so? I know he's sat down on the bench and he's done, but he just hit this record. 
if if you can talk to those SIDs beforehand or those social media guys beforehand, it's in your head, you're getting it. And and again, that's one of those things. It's, it all comes down to communication. It really does. Yeah, definitely. So who's going to do it? Who's going to go out and make this a goal for next year? All right. We got some, we got some, we got some takers. Awesome. Make, and, and seriously, you know, if it's on a Nikon, call me anytime and I'll try to talk you through it. Um, how to set it up. Um, I think I've helped Matt once when they were doing theirs. Uh, Jeff Miller um, helped him out sometimes. And I know I've called, even though it wasn't a Nikon, I know Jaron and those guys out there have helped me immensely uh, when needed, but that's what we're here for. So same goes for us, uh, me and Nate, like say, if it, you have Canon or Sony and you need help, we will help you. We have PDFs that will walk you through every single step of the way. And I think we can just put everything on the UPA document site on the website uh, because having a PDF that just tells you step-by-step step what you have to enter, what you have to do makes things so much easier. Uh, and we, yeah. will, we will definitely post those and I'll, I'll make sure that Facebook has the notice of where they're going to be at. Uh, one more question I have is, is, are there people that are interested in seeing this for Canon? We, we'd be happy to do it at a, a later date. Um, just go ahead and put it in the comments below and, and we'll, we'll set that up. Uh, final thoughts, Glenn? I just want to know what that wheel on the back of a Canon is for. I don't... <laughs> Thumb exercises. Thumb oh, exercises. Oh, okay. I, I never... I don't... <laughs> So the next time we can get together, I'm gonna to have a. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you the beauty of Canon. I, we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. Whatever. Bridge, baby. Bridge. <laughs> Those are ambidextrous uh, shooters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very cool. All right. We'll get this stuff out there and thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Thanks, Glenn. Have a good day, everyone. All right. Nice to see everybody.